Hello and welcome to Softpeak, the place where we want to work smarter to save more time to do more things. And in today's edition, uh, we will talk about digital collaboration and how we can be more effective when we have meetings and we want to collaborate with our colleagues or external parties. So starting off here, we will go back to our tenant, uh, the Softpeak tenant. And we can see here we have a bunch of uh, applications or services uh, already available to us that can help us be more effective when we want to do these uh, digital collaboration efforts. So there is a bunch of tools in here that can help us and we will cover a few of them. I think the, the most commonly used one is uh, Microsoft teams and that's where we want to focus out today's uh, episode around meetings and how we can uh, collaborate uh, in a digital space more effectively using microsoft teams but kind of before we start i wanted to highlight this article from uh, gartner and uh, from uh, work smarter with gartner smarter with gartner here is a similar kind of concept that we want to do on softpeak we want to be able to be more smart with softpeak in that case so i kind of like this article because it's focusing on four modes of collaboration in a hybrid work setting. So they had this nice kind of infographics here. We can open it up in a new tab so it's more visible. So this is the uh, an infographic that shows the intentional collaboration in a hybrid world that we can have a look at. So we have like co-located scenarios and we have distributed uh, uh, scenarios. We also have a synchronous work when we can do the work together at the same time. But we also have this asynchronous work where we can do the work asynchronously, meaning that we can be in, in a different place in a different time and we can uh, collaborate in a digital space in various uh, situations. And I think this is really useful kind of infographics because it explains some of the, the common things that we encounter. Some users prefer to sit together like a co-located synchronous kind of work environment when everyone is doing it all together, maybe using more analog uh, tooling like post-its and whiteboards and stuff. But you can also benefit from having digital tools even in this environment. So in this one, uh, where we have distributed and uh, synchronous work, maybe we are on a, on a Teams call or a Zoom call or something like that, and we are still apart and we have various kind of like boxes when we see people's heads maybe, uh, and while they talk, we kind of share something. So we're sitting apart, but we're working together in a synchronous way. There's also this working alone together. So we can sit side by side maybe, but we work alone, we focus, we sit maybe together in the same kind of office space, but we do different uh, things. So we kind of work asynchronously, maybe uh, this goes days between this kind of updates between uh, various work items in between those uh, people sitting together but working asynchronously. And then we have this fourth one here, working alone apart. And this is uh, probably what we felt during the pandemic that we were all alone sitting alone and we d didn't have so much uh, uh, interactions with other human beings so it's different uh, for each individual i think uh, what type of uh, environment uh, they prefer when they want to do this but from a digital collaboration perspective it's kind of important that all of the scenarios is supported in a good way so if I switch into Microsoft Teams here, we can see in this environment, I don't have too many users. I'm, I'm the only person in this uh, tenant uh, for now, but I still have the possibility to create new teams to be able to work together as a team. So I can hit this uh, plus symbol up here. And I can see that I can create a new team. The purpose of a team can be very different. Uh, it can be that we want to have a place, a workspace where we can gather everything that we, we need to have, maybe for a project, maybe for an event, uh, and maybe for some other 
things that you may need a team for. So inside this team, when I create a team uh, for this, a bunch of things will pr provision at the same time. It will create something called a Microsoft 365 group. In that group, you have a SharePoint site. So depending on the template we choose, when we kind of start this and kind of grow this into certain things, we can have different uh, kind of components inside this Teams team. There is a pretty good explanation if I click this one and I open up this link here, what's a team. We can see here from the supporting documentation from Teams, we can see that there is an explanation that we have a team it's something called a team and in that team we have various channels and channels can be a bunch of different things we can have private channels we can have something called shared channels with external parties uh, that we want to collaborate with so going back into teams here we can of course create a new team uh, for example i can create this new kind of event uh, scenario we can see that it creates seven different channels in case i wanted to and i can get a bunch of different apps also directly installed inside this template we can see approvals and bulletin and employee ideas and we have a, a sharepoint or microsoft list list with the content scheduler and milestones and one note we have get so much stuff when we just do this kind of uh, starting point so if i go back and maybe take a project for this we can see that we have different applications we get and different channels that it we can create uh, for this and we can of course explore a bunch of different scenarios for how we want to create uh, our teams uh, templates so we can kind of boilerplate a good starting point for for my scenario here but for today, I will start a new team from scratch. And there is three different uh, types of, uh, of uh, settings uh, that we can have on a team. We can have a private uh, setting and people need to have permission to be able to join. They will have to ask for permissions uh, to be able to join. We can have it publicly, like swinging doors, so anyone can kind of join as they want to. And we can have a, like organizational wide that everyone inside the organization automatically joins uh, the team. The team I'm just creating. So I will take this uh, private one and I will call it uh, Soft Peak. Uh, party 2023 and uh, it's a court uh, party planning party planning like that that's what we're planning to do with this so we will create and we a team dedicated to to plan out a soft peak uh, party and maybe we should add also that we should have a digital party because this will be a digital party so it won't be uh, needed to come in person to this party when i hit this uh, create it will create a bunch of things. It will kind of like uh, start various things. So it will create uh, a space for me now where I can have this soft peak digital party and I can invite other users to join this. And I, I don't have any users in my my tenant apart from me so for this scenario i will skip it for now i can add users later and we can showcase how that might look as well so now i'm inside my soft peak digital party newly created teams team and from here i can see that i have a chat window i can just start to communicate with my my fellow colleagues here uh, and i can have this asynchronous uh, dialogue going on so i can post something and i don't expect an immediate kind of return on this uh, communication piece maybe i ask a question and maybe in a couple of hours later someone answers and we can kind of build up that is this kind of iterative uh, dialogue inside here i can also create like announcement uh, like uh, it's really important that you think about this i can also manage the channel so i can click this settings here and i can change uh, the settings and I can see some analytics on how this uh, team is being used uh, as well and on, uh, we have a couple of tabs up here as well so we have this kind of chat window and we have this files window and this of course we have seen in previous episodes of, of uh, Softpeak that we this is SharePoint behind the scenes so we can open up uh, SharePoint here so we open up uh, the SharePoint uh, template. We can see that we have a, a document library inside SharePoint, uh, inside a SharePoint 
site called Softpeak Digital Party. Uh, that's the site name, the site URL for SharePoint. And we can see that this has a different kind of uh, layout the SharePoint. It has the navigation on the left hand side and it ha has a couple of different uh, menu items as well tied to it that the uh, communication site uh, doesn't have. So inside here I can of course work with uh, any type of document I would like to do and I can uh, create various stuff for this. And I can also create, if I go back to Teams here, I can also create additional kind of channels to this Apart, uh, I can I click this add channel and when I want to create a channel I can of course uh, have it in the different uh, privacy settings as well so I can have it uh, as a standard so everyone that's a part of this uh, Microsoft uh, Teams team will have access to it I can have it a private uh, kind of uh, uh, channel as well. So maybe I want to detail. I want to discuss the financials, uh, financial like that. So maybe I want to have it as, as a private. I, I want to hide this kind of channel to just a subset of people that should have access to this kind of uh, financial discussion. And I can also have something called a shared channel. So I can share my channel into other teams inside my tenant. For example, I can have in Softpeak, I can share this channel so I can have the same channel in multiple different teams. I can even share this uh, channel across other organizations uh, as well. So let's go ahead and create a private channel and just call it uh, financial. Uh, let's add an S there, financials, maybe. That's good. And we will see, it's adding a channel and I can, of course, I invite people, but the, again, it's only me in here. So now I can see that I have two different uh, channels uh, on my site. I have one that uh, doesn't have this kind of uh, lock icon on it. It, it, it's also read as uh, private. If I now go into the files here and I open up this in SharePoint instead, we can see that we have a different uh, SharePoint site for this one. It's completely different. The entire SharePoint site is different uh, than the other one. So we have two different uh, SharePoint sites, uh, one for financials and one for digital. So both of those have different kind of uh, access uh, possibilities. So inside here we have, uh, I'm the owner of both of them, but we have the possibilities to add members and owners to this as well. And this SharePoint site is respecting the settings from uh, inside Teams. So we can think about it like uh, Microsoft Teams is the master over SharePoint for this scenario for when it comes to who has access to this. So if I add a user to this kind of financials uh, discussion here, only that user will be able to see this, uh, this um, channel and SharePoint site. So inside here, let's go back to the general channel here. I can, of course, uh, uh, have an announcement and uh, let's just do something like that. Party time. We just create a standard post like this. So we just create uh, uh, welcome like that and we just make a post uh, to any like any standard post i can of course create an announcement as well by creating a really, really cool headline and say it like that welcome to the party and we have a multiple exclamation points there so we can of course have a more fancy kind of um, messaging or we can have a simple messaging like this and now people can go in here and start to, to reply and have a, a, like a threaded conversation around this kind of things and there's also some social aspects you can go in and like and uh, do stuff like that as well to this you can also share this and have this uh, the same kind of uh, of uh, thread or or, or a post on multiple different uh, channels as well inside a channel like this i can also click this uh, button up here we have this uh, camera icon and we can start a meeting immediately from within here or we can schedule a, a meeting if i press this schedule a meeting we have this kind of meeting scheduler i think this 
this concept of having meetings uh, should really be uh, on purpose. We shouldn't waste people's time. So it's good advice, I think, to be able to cr create a prepare for the meeting ahead of the meeting. So you so you actually think about the, the purpose of the meeting and why do you want to have the meeting. And there's a bunch of options inside Microsoft uh, Teams here that we can have a look at that, that can help uh, us create this meeting. So let's call it the uh, pre-plan uh, something like that and we can add attendees to this meeting as well I, again I don't have any other users but I can invite external users and I will do that uh, later on as well so the intent for this is to of course to add uh, multiple users and I can pick a time when I want to have this meeting and let's say I want to have it later today maybe at uh, two o'clock uh, something like that uh, and we can of course uh, set the time for the meeting so we can have like uh, maybe we will have it one hour meeting I think that to have two long meetings the longer the meeting it should be even more planned if it's a shorter meeting maybe it's uh, you can be more casual around this and of course you can add a location you can add a space a place where we want to have this meeting like in an, in an office or you can just leave it at, like this and it will be a digital meeting and of course we want to have some uh, meeting expectations and here uh, really comes the power of uh, tools like the co-pilot eventually will be able to to create like meeting uh, d d d invitations and uh, really fancy stuff around how we can plan for the meeting the expected outcomes and some key takeaways some meeting minutes and stuff like that so we can just type something blah blah here and this of course would be a really good really bad example to just for a call to a meeting and we also see here we can uh, have something called a lobby and we can also see it that we can start the recording automatically so this is also advisable to kind of like think about do we want to record this meeting do we want to have a video of this uh, meeting uh, and Sometimes it's good to have a, a recording of the meeting, then you can go and recap and someone who, who didn't uh, make it to the meeting can follow along at least. And uh, there's a bunch of options of this. And there's also retention connected to this. So we can have like automatic uh, deletion of certain times when it comes to, to recorded meetings. But there's more options here as well. So we can have a look at the, uh, the extended options. So we can have a, something called a lobby. So anyone in my organization and guests to the tenant can automatically bypass the lobby. Anyone else that's not intended for the meeting, they will end up in a lobby and we can decide if we want to, to have them join. And there's a bunch of different settings that we can kind of like arrange for here. Maybe I, I'm, I'm the key speaker at the meeting. Maybe we have a meeting where I want to talk for maybe 30 minutes. We don't want other people to be able to to talk to that, that and maybe with them we can mute them and hide the video for for them or just pick a certain people who are allowed to talk to the meeting we can also have this concept of uh, Q&A so we can have like applications inside the meeting in this case we have we can have a questions and answers sections to the meeting so if I just go ahead and press save for this meeting and then I can schedule the assistant, I can make sure that the people that I invite that I have access to that's inside my tenant, I can see them here so we can plan the meeting and see who is some key people that we might may need for the meeting. Maybe we should make sure that they have at the, the correct time for the meeting. And then when we're finished, we can just press the send and the meeting will be created. So if I now go to my calendar here, I should be able to see uh, my meeting inside my calendar. And this, of course, is really nice to have connected both to Microsoft Teams and Outlook as well. Depending on my, my preference, I can go into the Outlook and I can see the meetings planning there as well. And from here, of course, I can open, I can change the settings of my meeting and I can join the meeting and I can edit the, the settings of the meeting and I can invite more people. I think there is also this kind of concept of uh, various types of meetings. And I, I think this one is a good, uh, pretty good uh, to check out as well. Quick start meetings, live events. We can see that there is a couple of different types of meetings. We have like uh, standard meetings uh, and we have like webinars and live events. And I think this section here is quite interesting to have a look at as well, that we can see inside 
the Microsoft Cloud, we can have different types of, uh, of uh, participants. Depending on our size of organization, we can have like different uh, settings. And some may be good to have for certain scenarios. Maybe if it's a short meeting just with a couple of persons, then maybe to have this Q&A section here, maybe that's kind of uh, redundant to have a Q&A section for for. A smaller kind of standard meeting but it's up to you depending on how you want to to create your kind of uh, settings you can use different uh, tools for that i think also when you have meetings like this and you're you're the organizer of the meeting i think it's good to have uh, like a proper preparation for the meeting and i think one of the most common tools to use is actually the powerpoint uh, this uh, kind of tooling so by leveraging some of the superpowers within the power uh, point, you can then have uh, additional benefits and additional kind of uh, punch to your meeting. And the preparation of your meeting might be way better than, uh, than uh, if not. By having a kind of an agenda for my me upcoming meeting here, I want to create a presentation. And I'm going to start off with a blank presentation. So we just call it uh, uh, pre uh planning yeah, like that and just uh, maybe uh, type in my name henrik here so this will be the starting point of my my meeting and of course i can go into the design tab here and i can maybe select a, a color i want to have i prefer the darker background we can see here on the designer window here we can get the bunch of examples on how we kind of improve the design so maybe i would like to have it really fancy like this and i can create a new slide maybe for the let's call it agenda maybe and we want to have uh, uh, who what uh, and when uh, that's the kind of the questions we have for this so we want to to cover this on the meeting agenda so then we are kind of prepared and we maybe we'll have some uh, additional here so let's call it the uh, minutes maybe if we want to have or just call it notes maybe if we want to have additional questions or anything like that we can have a space so we can have like a q a session for the meeting maybe if we want to cover something specific during the meeting inside this kind of presentation we can add a pretty cool thing as well that's called the cameo so we can insert a cameo feed, like a video feed that we can have when we do the, uh, the presentation in our meeting, when we present this, uh, this uh, uh, PowerPoint, we can then present it using uh, uh, our cameo feature. So we can add a cameo here, uh, so we can format the camera, as we can see up here, we can format the camera and we can uh, turn the preview on and off and we can see we can have different styles and we can then we can uh, also arrange uh, the position of the camera and when it comes to layering in here so if we turn on uh, my standard webcam here and activate the preview now we can see a little window uh, down here and hello again so we can see a little window down here where I present this kind of information where my head will be during this presentation. I can of course change it into various uh, different layouts depending on how I want this to look and how, how big I want it to be. So I can of course arrange and create various kind of uh, fancy thing. I can also change it into certain shapes. Maybe I want to have it uh, like this. I want to be a proper speaker. Maybe I want to have it something like this and I want it to look yeah something like that that's a good presentation i think uh, to have and of course i can change this and i can modify this and i can prepare for this as well so i can put on my my a nicer shirt maybe and uh, comb my hair and maybe do some things to be better on the video but for this scenario i think this uh, works uh, really good so now when we have this uh, presentation all finished and everything looks okay, I prepare for the meetings, then I can save this uh, file and I can store it in my OneDrive and just call it pre-planning and that's all fine. I just save it like that and then I'm kind of have a good idea of how, how I want to, what I want to talk about during the meeting. I'm prepared for the meeting. I can now 
go ahead and maybe add some more additional details to my meeting. I can go into my meeting here and I can uh, click on it and I can go into the edit dates and I want to maybe to, to finalize a couple of details. Maybe I want to add um, my meeting descriptions here and maybe I want to add this presentation ahead of time to the meeting so, so people can see the meetings uh, uh, presentation before of time and you can save a bunch of time for this uh, presentation as well. But I do want to have someone to meet with uh, and I, I do want to add this meeting to to someone else so let's go ahead and switch um, tenant here so for this scenario I'm using a different desktop it's called a developer tenant desktop inside this uh, other kind of desktop I have a Microsoft uh, developer tenant hooked up uh, to a developer uh, pre-configured kind of tenant and if you're interested in understanding how more around how this uh, tenant work and how you can uh, set it up uh, I have covered this uh, previously in one of the sessions in uh, in uh, in Softpeak series, but there is also the possibility to just uh, search for it, and you should be able to find tenant details. And if you're really interested in me to covering more in detail of this, I can of course uh, leave a comment in the, in the YouTube video here, and we can cover that as well. So who is Megan up here? So this is a, a person that's inside uh, another tenant. So she is called Megan uh, Bowen, and I can copy her email here. So this is uh, uh, another completely different tenant uh, that uh, she is on. And I've opened up two different applications uh, to showcase this. One is uh, the Outlook for the web. So we can see any emails coming into her account. And the other one is uh, Microsoft Teams. So we, of course, we want to invite Megan to our pre-planning meeting of uh, the soft peak party here so it, when we open up the teams we can open up teams in the in the web experience so we can bring our team together and we can have one-to-one -one chats and we can uh, collect our uh, connect our thoughts online and we can have files and notes and apps and st stuff like that so let's go uh, inside here we see this is, because this is a completely different tenant we see different uh, uh, channels and teams and we also see different applications here depending on the purpose and the, how that tenant is specifically configured so now i want to to add megan here so i will I'll go ahead and copy her email here so we have this uh, kind of email to megan we can just copy her email here uh, into this and we can also see in this tenant we can see that they have a, a really nice picture profiles Having proper uh, images of uh, the, of the people also helps uh, because I think this is a new kind of concept when we work in a digital collaboration way. We typically click on the persons and we can get more meta information around the persons during the meetings. So it's advisable to to be mindful on how you look on your profile pictures and what kind of meta information there is around you inside the tenant. And uh, that's that change that you can do in something called delve. So you can go into the tenant and then you can switch uh, the stuff there as well. So if I go back to my, my tenant here, I can see on my picture profile, I don't have anything yet, but I can of course change my, my picture here and I can go into my Microsoft 365 tenant here as well and I can change the information in here as well. I can go to this, my Microsoft 365 profile and then I can add and change uh, information here as well. I can add a picture. So maybe for this scenario, we'll just upload a new picture and we can take something here from, uh, maybe we go to our downloads and we pick something here, Softpeak uh, featured PNG, uh, something like that. Uh, that's awesome. And we just apply it. This is, of course, a bad example in that scenario that I'm just uh, uh, covering here because it's it doesn't help the user's understanding who I am. But at least it's something uh, for now, so you can see this. You can also update the information I have around me. So when people click on my profile in the meeting, they can get more information around who I am. So now I go back to this meeting, I can now add a ref an attendee. So we see that now I pasted in Megan's email here. We see that it's it's unknown. I don't know who this uh, person is uh, in my tenant. So when I click this send update here, it will add her to the meeting. 
So when that's done, uh, we can also open up uh, uh, the latest version of uh, Outlook here, uh, uh, kind of uh, the latest uh, view on Outlook in the calendar view. I mean, I can see the meeting in here as well in us inside Outlook. It may look a bit different, uh, so the experience is maybe a bit different. I can see here if I open up this one, I can see the meetings uh, information in a, in a maybe a different way. But it's the same kind of information uh, stored in here. I can see that we sent an invite to Megan to join the meeting and we can do some changes here as well. So from here, let's switch back to uh, the other developer tenant. And uh, now we're inside uh, Megan's experience here and uh, in the developer tenant. We can now see that we have a, a small red dot on top of my mail section here. So I can go into my uh, Outlook mail. I can now see, ah, I received an, a mail from someone at Softpeak uh, asking me to join a meeting. Then of course I can answer and I can see if I have any conflict and I can say that uh, maybe I, I don't have uh, the possibility to join or, or something like that. And I can just press yes. When I do this, when I send this, yes, uh, I have uh, sent this. I can also forward it to maybe more people that wasn't invited intentionally. So maybe I want someone else from my organization to help Softpeak plan this kind of uh, digital party. So maybe I can forward it to other people as well. And as Megan here, she can also open up uh, Microsoft Teams. You can see on the left hand side here, they don't have the, the calendar view immediately here. So for some organizations, they prefer to have uh, use Outlook maybe rather than Teams for, for this. So if I open up the calendar view, I can of course see the similar kind of experience here. So I can click on this one. I don't have the possibilities to edit. I just have the possibility to join and I can see the meeting link from her experience. So if I now switch back to Softpeak experience again here, I can go into my my meeting, of course, and I can see that everything uh, looks uh, all good. I can open up uh, Teams here and let's join the meeting now. So I can click this join button when I start to join. I did uh, put in the, the button here to be able to record the meeting. I can see that I have the possibility to have something called effects and uh, avatars. That's something I can click on and I can see uh, I can switch to avatars. I don't have enabled avatars. I need to disable the camera. I can turn off the camera. I can see that I create your avatar in just a few steps. So I can, before I kind of join the meeting, I can create an avatar. I can find this application if I search on the under apps as well. So I can add this uh, avatars app to my experience here inside Teams. I have this uh, small application inside Teams. So maybe you get fatigued on uh, watching yourself all the time. So maybe you want to have a digital representation of yourself. So you can just pick something that uh, maybe looks something like you, like you do. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how you uh, identify yourself, but I will pick something uh, remotely similar to how I look. And then I can customize it. I can change it and I can change maybe Maybe some uh, of my clothing here. Maybe I'm a bit more relaxed than this. And maybe I have different, uh, yeah. let's see my body shape. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, let's add some or remove some uh, muscles or something like that. We can just change my appearance. Of course, this is kind of like gamification. I can create my own avatar I want to, to, to look like. I can change my skin tone and I can do change my face and I can change maybe my eyes. Maybe I have a more greenish eyes. So something like that maybe. Uh, and maybe I have a different kind of nose uh, of, of something. I can create uh, kind of a, um, an uh, avatar <laughs> for for how I might uh, uh, want others to kind of see me, and maybe I have a bit more relaxed approach to this. Uh, so maybe I don't have this kind of. Uh, Maybe I'm um, something like this. This is uh, awesome. Maybe I prefer to have some kind of. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm a cowboy. Maybe. 
I don't know, maybe I take something just uh, just to prove the point here. So we'll take something uh, cap, maybe that's uh, maybe good. Or I just take the more relaxed approach and say, okay, this is uh, me here. I, I like to play chess, so this is awesome. So I just save this avatar. I can have a couple of uh, avatars, I think maybe three different avatars. And when I have the created the avatars, like I've done right now, I can use the avatars by going back into the, the calendar here and then I can click on the meeting and I can click this join button again. Now I see uh, in the avatars, uh, I can see my avatar like this and I can join the meeting as my avatar and I, the sound of my microphone is actually changing the mouth of the, the appearance of the of the avatar here and I can put this avatar into uh, maybe a setting. I prefer to be something like this. This is, looks really good. Uh, and I can then join the meeting. Because we uh, activated the start the recording session immediately when the meeting start, the, the recording will start immediately when I, uh, when I go into the meeting. So we can see now in the meeting I have this uh, recording already started. And uh, at the moment I'm alone in the meeting. So if I click on people, I only see me. But I see that uh, Megan has accepted, but we don't know her status if she's uh, online or not. So it reads off offline because she's in a different uh, organization than me so I can't see all of her details uh, uh, for this so I can do a couple of things uh, in in a meeting like this I can of course chat and say uh, just uh, welcome uh, to, like that and I can do various chats before the meeting and during the meeting and after the meeting there still can be available so we can have a, a save this kind of information and when it comes to this avatar, I can do a couple of cool things with this avatar as well. I can click on the avatars settings here. We can have some uh, reactions to this. So if I click on this one, we can do various things. It can be, we can make it do various kind of uh, actions depending. Maybe I want to think a little bit. Maybe I want to have some tears of joy and maybe I want to tap my head. And I can do this during the meeting and I don't have to watch myself. Uh, it's still kind of uh, something for others to see, uh, but it's it's not uh, uh, connected to my, my camera. So I don't need to watch myself and I can I can have a, a representation but still not be completely there. So now I hope that uh, Megan joins this uh, meeting as well. So switching back to, to Megan here, uh, over to here, we can now see inside um, uh, if I go into Microsoft Teams here we, and go into my calendar, we can see that we can join this uh, this uh, meeting. So let's click the join button and we, we don't put on the camera and a microphone. So we, we don't activate anything uh, from her side. So we continue without audio and video just for the for this, this scenario. So for her experience, we won't have any microphone or anything. She will just be a silent participant. So we, when she joins the meeting, I can hear some sounds in my other tenant here saying that she has joined uh, the meeting. So if I switch back now to my tenant here, I have this, uh, ah, she's external to my organization. I need to invite her from the lobby. So I need to admit her into the meeting. If I click this click admit, this admit, she will then be a part of, be a part of, of, of uh, the meeting here. Meeting. So if I switch back to my developer tenant here, we can now see what she sees uh, from her point of view. She sees this big kind of talking head uh, avatar thing and she can have uh, different buttons up here. She can see people raise hands maybe, maybe she raises a hand but uh, and then she. We, if I go back now to my other tenant here, I can see that Megan raises her hand and then I can ask Megan, hey, do you want to say something maybe or do you have any questions to this uh, presentation. So then, of course, I can go back to, to Megan and maybe I can, uh, I didn't, was, didn't have any questions and I found this kind of Q&A section. So I can open up this Q&A section and I can ask a question and I can ask it, uh, uh, why? Uh, like that, why? So I would just type in why here, post, and then we can see uh, 
and I can hear myself uh, two times because I'm in two connected uh, devices. So that might be a little bit annoying for you as well listening into this. So I will I will kind of uh, remove her from the meeting pretty soon as well. So if I go back to this setting here, we can see again that we have in the Q and A section. We now have this uh, question that uh, Megan asked. And of course, uh, sometimes uh, your participants here uh, may have some uh, experiences that uh, they kind of uh, need to do something else and maybe they need to join another meeting or just straight up leave the meeting like this. So maybe Megan leaves the meeting so and she can rejoin the meeting and the meeting is recorded as well. So she can join the meeting at a later state uh, as well. So I can continue the meeting here uh, by myself, uh, but uh, still the meeting is recorded. So it will be stored inside the, the tenant that created the meeting. The meeting recording will, will stay in there and we create the meeting from a channel so it will be stored inside that uh, that Teams team. I can do a couple of other things as well. I can click this uh, button here and I can see that we have uh, other options as well. So we can do various settings and configurations and reactions and stuff. But we can also hit this uh, app button here and we can do other things uh, inside Microsoft Teams. We can, for example, there's a bunch of different uh, collaborative applications uh, that uh, both third party and Microsoft has built as well. So maybe, so now switching back to, to Megan here in the developer tenant, maybe she wants to join the meeting again. She can of course join in in the meeting again. So we continue without uh, any audio or video feed to this. And I can go back into my tenant again and I can see uh, she's, uh, she's back into the meeting. Now, uh, later on in the meeting, I can see the meeting participant uh, kind of log and I can see who, who has attended the meeting uh, and anything going on to the meeting. And that's valuable insights of the meetings. And we will also have a brief look on, on Viva Insights, how this uh, can be configured as well. So, but for now, we will kind of like do another thing. We will start to share something with Megan. We want to share something that she can see. And, and I want to have this stream presented. So I can click this share button and we want to have a discussion around uh, with Megan uh, versus various things. And I, of course I can share my screen or a window. I can even uh, start a whiteboarding session so we can have a collaborative environment and I will do that briefly. But before that we will kind of like uh, work of our our presentation we just created. So this pre-planning uh, meeting. So I will start with a live share of, uh, of my presentation. So while this is loading we can see that we have this kind of like pre-planning so now if I go back to, to Megan here again and see uh, her point of view when she looks in the meeting, we now see that uh, this talking head uh, here, uh, which is not moving, uh, and we see this presentation. We have the option down here that we can walk into the presentation and we can step through the presentation. That's one of the benefits of having uh, a PowerPoint uh, live presentations uh, rather than having uh, uh, just sharing your screen because the users can uh, follow along in their own kind of uh tempo. So inside here I can see I, I have maybe I have some uh, talking notes in my view here. I can see my talking notes. I can see my things and I can do various things. I can add maybe a, a draw something nice like that and I can see from Megan's point of view, she only sees the, the kind of drawing I created. She didn't see the, the, the talking notes that I've seen. So if you want to have a presentation that you really want to kind of like be on the point of and you need to want to bring across a certain kind of uh, a key points that you really want to highlight, you can of course do that as well. So if I switch a slide here and I go into this second slide, you now see that I have this kind of uh, animation here. Uh, I can do a couple of things. I can from inside here, I can go into the effects and avatars uh, section again, and I can go and uh, open up my, my kind of... Uh, uh, reactions here and let's do something that's uh, uh, something that's really cool you see there's tons of different things I, I can do here so let's do a dab we can see that it's doing the dab and maybe I can do a laugh and a cry and something like that I
So this is really cool when I want to do my presentation and I want to do to answer everything. And of course, I can have like yeah, meeting minutes on the side as well. And we can have active discussions. So and then I can also stop uh, sharing my uh, presentation when we finished kind of discussing my presentation. We can also have a look at uh, another kind of uh, really cool application that we can use it's something called microsoft whiteboard so if i click on the whiteboard we, we can have like a, a visual uh, collaboration uh, session that we can collaborate together uh, on solving various things so maybe we have uh, some brainstorming sessions we would want to use uh, various kind of brainstorming activities maybe for this meeting we want to maybe solve some problems and maybe we want to use a five whys analysis or maybe a cause and effect diagram analysis we want we can do a bunch of different things inside here and we maybe we can have just have some kind of learning uh, whatever type of uh, meeting intent we can have a pretty cool understanding on, on the purpose of the meeting so let's say just uh, we want to have a goal setting and just add this template and i just put it in the middle of the screen here we can collaborate in the meeting uh, with uh, this kind of experience so if i switch now back to to megan here she can also use the, this kind of uh, whiteboarding session she can also change stuff and type stuff immediately into the meeting here so she can collaborate uh, immediately in in uh, this uh, meeting session just like anyone else so we can see that we have multiple people collaborating in a digital kind of uh, workspace like this so i can see changes done from uh, from the users and i can uh, follow along and we can uh, communicate and collaborate uh, both uh, synchronously and asynchronously in a really good way and this is of course just was one example of how you can do this there is multiple different apps and solutions out there uh, when it comes to visual collaborations you have like uh, miro for example is a popular one and mural for example and bunch of others as well that you can collaborate depending on your organizational needs maybe you have some uh, kind of uh, uh, 3d drawings you want to collaborate with and maybe you have some cad drawings you want to collaborate with you can create your own kind of application or have your partners uh, develop applications to, for your specific needs as well so this is kind of new type of application uh, called collaborative application that we can think about microsoft teams as a platform for digital collaboration and moving it into the space of uh, super apps uh, so we can have uh, multiple different purposes and multiple different uh, um, tweakings depending on our organizational needs we can create microsoft teams into the the platform that we kind of need it to be for our specific organization so when this meeting kind of uh, is finished, uh, maybe Megan uh, says, says her goodbyes and thank you so much for the meeting and uh, it was really helpful. We managed to do what we set out to do. She can just leave the meeting uh, like that and all is good from Megan's perspective. But from the meeting organizer's perspective, uh, this asynchronous way of working doesn't end really here because when I leave this meeting, a couple of things will happen. From this perspective, I can now open up the meeting again. Uh, at any point in time, I can go back to this uh, kind of meeting and I can see some uh, some interesting things in this meeting. I can see, for example, the attendance uh, list. I can see how long the meeting was and uh, who were participating in the meeting. I can open up the, the whiteboard session that we just created during the meeting so we can access that. And we can also see the, the Q&A we can see the, the questions and we can see in the chat dialogues as well. We can see the recorded uh, session we had for the meeting as a stored file uh, that we can have a look at later on. So maybe someone else uh, was intending to go to this meeting. They can jump into the meeting experience later to get, gather some really key kind of uh, pieces to the meeting. And coming also, there is a, a bunch of premium features 
features inside Microsoft 365 that will enhance this even further for for this type of experience. So you can have like a co-pilot additions to this and you can get meeting notes and you can do summarization of the meeting and maybe key takeaways and automatic uh, like uh, meeting minutes and a bunch of stuff like that as well. But there's also a, a pretty cool thing called called Microsoft Mesh uh, as well. So Microsoft Mesh really gives the possibility to have this kind of immersive kind of uh, spaces. So there is a couple of things that we, we just had a look at the avatar section that we can have this kind of virtual representation of uh, of ourselves and we can uh, still participate. But coming soon is also this immersive spaces. Um, so we can see here it's coming soon uh, to Teams and we can have explore this kind of uh, immersive uh, space as we can see a couple of uh, pictures here maybe we can see that you can join so we can see that we can uh, open up the video in a new tab here we can see that we can join various uh, various uh, virtual kind of spaces where we can see that we can from inside teams we will eventually be able to to kind of join an immersive space and step into a 3D kind of landscape where we can communicate, also bridging some boundaries between maybe languages and also make this more interactive regardless of uh, where we are sitting in this uh, kind of uh, environment. So this example, I think this one is, is, is pretty cool as well. So if we see at this, we can have, we can create an atmosphere so we can also have like virtual kind of uh, whiteboards and stuff and meeting rooms and uh, stuff like that. All really cool things. And I think lots of people talk about uh, the metaverse and this is of course a representation of that as well. So it's uh, the Microsoft Mesh metaverse where you can go in and have your avatars in a virtual kind of environment. And also maybe looking forward a bit into the future as well, we will have this uh, glasses maybe, we will have this kind of uh, immersive experiments, both uh, virtual and augmented kind of realities where we can kind of meet in new and exciting ways. There's also Another thing that uh, can be worth highlighting is something called Microsoft Loop. It's a, a way, a new type of uh, collaboration uh, piece that we can uh, we can have inside uh, our tenant. So we can use this uh, uh, kind of like components and bringing together components and collaborate in 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 a really interesting new asynchronous way. So if I just visit loopmicrosoft.com, I can hit this uh, get started. It will request me to sign into my tenant. And then I, when I do this, I kind of uh, learn, I need to learn how to unlock it uh, to start working with Microsoft Loop. So I need to follow some guidelines here to be able to see what I need to do to, to access into the loop, uh, to activate loop into my, my uh, tenant. And of course, that's something we want to do. So we can go log into this configoffice.com here and we just need to sign into this and we hit this uh, customization loop policy and we create a new loop policy. Maybe we call it just loop policy. And then we can see, we can set uh, the scope of this. It's going to be, of course, a, a specific group. Maybe you want to target a specific user group or you can just target everyone. So everyone have access to this uh, loop policy. And then we click uh, next and we need to select here. And we can uh, search for a loop in here and we can find the various uh, loop uh, policies that we want to configure. And of course, we can configure this one and we enable it and just hit apply for all of them. So we will just uh, activate all of the loop uh, components in here. So we will activate loop for Outlook as well. So we just hit this one and we just press next and we make sure that we have all of our policies is correct and we're happy with that and then we just can go ahead and create this. So for example, now if I do some changes here again, I will do some changes here and I can go back into my Microsoft uh, 
teams. I can see that the changes has been done here and I can uh, see various uh, things and I can copy this component and I can have this component and I can paste this component in various different places and still it will kind of be a single source uh, that will be the same all of the time. So uh, regardless of where we kind of use this loop component, it will still reflect to all other instances where the loop component is, is uh, being used. So another pretty really cool thing I can do with uh, this kind of uh, loop component is that I can click on this shared location and I can see where this uh, kind of loop component is and I can also add this to a loop workspace. So now it's opening up the, the Microsoft loop application. Once I've finished with the kind of policies I, I then have access to this uh, loop uh, microsoft.com environment where I can add this to a uh, kind of a workspace where I have various kind of component in multiple different places. So while this is uh, still spinning around here, I, I do think that this uh, provisioning may take some time before it's actually finished. So so maybe I won't be finished with this one for this uh, current episode. But for a coming episode, maybe we can take a deep dive into the loop component. But for now, we can go back to this uh, task uh, here, this uh, fluid uh, web view, and we can click the share button here and we can share it maybe with the... Uh, we add it, Henrik here, and uh, this is a loop demo, uh, something like that. And we can share it. See here, sh uh, people in Softpick with the link can edit. So if I just share it like this, it will be shared across my organization. So anyone that has this can uh, use this. As we can see here on the loop microsoft.com, we can now see that this is in the preview. It's not really released yet, but you can opt in and uh, explore around with it and you can try out certain things. And we can see here that we have uh, the, the concept of uh, various work uh, spaces that we can have in uh, addition to this. So we can check out the basics, how we can create a component and how we can work with components and how we can work from a mobile experience. And we can also see here that we can uh, use it for different things that we can have like a really fancy tables like this that we can work out of and we can also give microsoft of course some feedback uh, and uh, share our appreciation around this so this is one way of doing it so we can add various uh, kind of like uh, workspaces so we can bundle together various uh, kind of uh, of uh, loop components into a workspace so we can do this by having a, a workspace like this, getting started workspace. So we can add like pages uh, that can contain all of the various uh, components we have so we can add a new page and just call it a test page or something like that inside here we can add various kind of uh, uh, loop components that we want to have for this maybe i want to create a task list i can of course do that and it's contained with inside this kind of workspace we have if i want to create additional kind of workspaces i can click on this kind of root section here i can have i can see that we have uh, getting started and we have another one and i can create additional ones like a workspace so let's call it um, soft peak uh, let's not forget the digital uh, digital uh, party uh, 2023 like that and we have a dedicated workspace that we can work out of inside here we can have various pages and we can add additional pages so so this is the pre-planning one and we can add, of course, add various stuff here. So we can add, for example, uh, meeting notes or project planning. So we can aggregate stuff like that. Really fancy kind of already pre-configured templates that we can work out of. And of course, we can reuse all of the small components and we can do this very very nicely collaborative uh, environment that we can have uh, reusability of our components regardless of the tooling that the users want to have so maybe some users want to stay in teams and other ones would prefer to go into this uh, loop uh, application and other ones maybe just in email or, or something like that 
So uh, this was a bunch of examples of how we can uh, collaborate uh, uh, collaborate uh, more effectively across the various things. But as always, I would like to highlight this importance of uh, having a proper governance and uh, driving the adoption of uh, the various tooling that we put in front of our users so we get the maximum benefit of, from the tooling we have. So inside Adoption Microsoft, there is a bunch of resources uh, covering uh, lots of different things and toolings uh, and experiences samples and lots of valuable things and I wanted to highlight one specific resource here called uh, the Microsoft uh uh, modern collaboration architecture. So this is a bunch of th different things that can help us uh, drive the attention of the users and also this modern collaboration architecture, but also communication pieces, how we can effectively communicate uh, in one-to-one uh, -one meetings and uh, larger team meetings and all of that kind of components. So if we download the modern collaboration architecture presentation here, we can just download it to our desktop as well, so we can open it up in, in the desktop. So let's click on open file here and we can have this just rush through this uh, small presentation here. So for example, I can see here that we have something called the modern collaboration architecture. And we have this example of a person called Julie here and we can see that she's an individual and she has certain skill sets and mindsets and certain tooling that she, she works with. And this of course is very different uh, depending on your organization, what type of tooling we have, but there's a bunch of things that she as an individual are working with. And of course, skill sets she wants to learn and explore and uh, stuff like that. And she performs uh, as an individual, typically performs inside a team. And a team is a bunch of individuals that would like to collaborate in various uh, purposes and outcomes. And as a team, as a collective in a team, we would like to have certain toolings and certain uh, ambitions as well when we collaborate in a team environment. So the team can be any number of people that we need to be able to collaborate. So for many of them, maybe we prefer to use Teams, but other tools as well, like Slack, for example, is good for this purpose uh, as well, to be able to collaborate across uh, various teams and projects and uh, purposes as well. So inside here, there's also concepts of uh, well-being so there's a concept inside uh, Viva that can also help uh, with uh, understanding the individual performance, then the team performance, and also the community performance. So communities is like similar to teams, but it's it's more focused around uh, engagement of various uh, things. So it's not maybe it's bigger, maybe it's uh, it's more uh, focused around uh, co uh, collective knowledge and interest. It can be uh, like a like a something that uh, drives the interest rather than my role within the organization so it can be very good to manage various certain of uh, of a center of excellence for example or communities of practice uh, as well that you can have for your organization and this is called viva engage uh, for this scenario so inside here there is a correlation in between how we can work together with teams and viva engage also called jammer before inside the organization so in the organization organizational perspective, if you look at it from a top uh, organization perspective, there's also tons of uh, town halls and stuff you would like to do. So all of this kind of tooling that we have inside here. You can see that this is a bunch of different toolings that the organization wants to provide to be able to, for everyone in the organization from the individual to the teams to the communities to be able to collaborate uh, collaborate in between each other in, a, in the optimal kind of way. So this is one example. Uh, I think it's a really good example from a modern uh, collaboration architecture perspective on how we can look at it and how we can um, identify what type of tooling we use and how we can drive the adoption for those toolings in in the best possible way so we each individual can maximize their performance and the teams can maximize their performance from a team perspective and the organization also thrives
survive because of that. So there is, I re- recommend this uh, kind of uh, adoption uh, Microsoft.com kind of resources because it really helps uh, communicate uh, the the importance of having a proper governance and how to do this. There's also a power up uh, solution here where you can have uh, what tool when and when we have uh, what type of tooling because in larger enterprises there is several different tooling that can do the same thing uh, and you don't really understand as an individual especially a new one what tool is is intended for what purpose and how we kind of govern for the the information and the structural capital that we create and how we can govern for that in our organizational memories in the best possible way so with that uh, i thank you so much for for uh, listening in to me today and uh, as always, uh, the, here at Softpeak, uh, our ambition is to, to help you be more smart about the way you work, to save more time, to do more meaningful things. And we focus on digital literacy, artificial intelligence and citizen development. And today we've been focusing around how we can collaborate uh, collaborate in, inside the digital environments that we have and a bunch of tooling around that as well. So if this is something that you kind of like and are into, then hit that uh, like button uh, and as well as subscribe to my channel here. You can also visit softpick.com and subscribe to the coming newsletter as well. So with that, I thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay safe.